I'm just gonna kind of work it in here. Nice masseuse. It's really important that the cauliflower feels relaxed. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Juicy. Today I'm being challenged to prepare three delicious and affordable meals using cauliflower. Using different techniques, we're gonna be transforming cauliflower into breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all for less than three dollars a plate. Although cauliflower is a great substitute for other things, it really does have its own distinct characteristics and flavor. There are so many cool ways to transform cauliflower into completely different preparations. Another advantage of cauliflower is that it's high in fiber and full of nutrients. Let's get started. First up, breakfast. And for that, we're gonna be making cauliflower porridge with garlicky spinach topped with a raw egg yolk. In our version of the porridge, we're going to be using riced cauliflower instead of the grains. I love porridge for breakfast because it's hot and it's hearty, and it also comes together very quickly. For the base of the porridge, I'm gonna be using a vegetable broth. We have two cups of water here. Turn the pot on. We'll just get this water hot and add the cubes. They'll probably break up on their own, but I'm just kind of expediting the process. These things pack a punch. They have salt, they have MSG in them, they also have a variety of dried spices and vegetables. So I'm just gonna let this do its thing and we're gonna get going with the rice cauliflower. So you could go out and buy pre-riced cauliflower at the supermarket, but by doing it yourself, you're gonna save a little money. We're gonna be using the trusty old box grater. I'm using the large holes here and going ahead and grating. If this head of cauliflower seems to be a bit cumbersome and hard to hold, just cut it in half. Make sure you're doing it on a flat surface, it's stable. We're gonna grate through this whole cauliflower. As I fill my tray, I'm gonna go ahead and just start adding it directly to our stock. Stir this in. So when you get to the end of grating here, just be careful. Grate until you feel safe. That should be a t-shirt. Grate until you feel safe. Don't wanna waste anything. We're putting the whole thing into this pot. I'm gonna let this go for about 10 to 15 minutes. And while that cooks, we're gonna start preparing our garlicky spinach. We're gonna take a stick of butter. While the butter is melting, we're gonna go ahead and slice the garlic thin on this one. You might say, well, that's a lot of garlic. That's why we're calling it garlicky spinach. You could put less garlic or no garlic at all. Our butter has just melted. You see the clear area, that's the pure fat. And then you see is kind of white bits, and the white bits are the milk solids that are in the butter. By browning those milk solids, we get this nutty flavor, which is delicious. Our porridge is simmering nicely. I'm just adding a touch more water to it. You can let it cook down further and not add water if you want it thicker. So we're seeing our garlic browning. We're seeing little bits of those white milk solids starting to become golden brown, which means that our butter is browning as well. We're gonna lower the heat just a touch, add the spinach, you might say, well, that's a lot of spinach for a small pan. Might seem that way. Spinach will wilt down to nothing. And I'm actually gonna season it now too. Seasoning will actually draw out moisture from the spinach and promote it to kind of wilt down. Think about how small your spinach is gonna get. Because if you season as though this is gonna stay this way, you're probably gonna overseason your spinach. I'm losing the crackle right now. I don't wanna steam it so much, so I turn the heat up just a touch. There are pieces of spinach in here that haven't completely wilted, but because it's very hot, the pan has some residual heat in it. I'm just gonna turn the heat off and let it kind of finish on its own. It's really tasty, but it does need a bit of salt. All of our components are tasting delicious. They look great, so it is time to plate. Very important, porridge will be very hot once it's finished cooking. So we've let it settle down a little bit, and now we're gonna go ahead and plate it. Get a little quick stir. I like the consistency. If you want it a touch thinner than this, you can go with that. So I'm gonna grab a nice spoon of spinach here. We're putting a raw egg yolk on top of this. My hands are clean. I'm literally gonna crack this egg and almost pour it directly into my hand and let the white run through my fingers. Last component, I have this kind of chili crunch. So the actual pieces of chili in here are nice and crispy. And then it's sitting in this spicy oil. Some of the brown butter's coming off of the spinach, but I'm gonna add more on because we have it. So there you have it, four portions of cauliflower porridge with garlicky spinach and a raw egg yolk for $9.53, coming out to $2.38 a portion. You might be looking at this and saying, I don't really wanna eat this raw egg yolk on top, but we're gonna be mixing it in with the hot porridge, so it's gonna heat it through and give it a different texture and feel. There's no shortage of flavor here. The porridge itself, 
really has garnered tons of flavor just from those bouillon cubes, but it has this richness to it. A lot of it has to do with the brown butter. Most of it has to do with that yolk. What I do like about a cauliflower porridge, you're not getting the starch from the grains for it to be this very heavy, almost like sticky thing. Although I wanna continue eating this delicious cauliflower porridge, it is time for lunch. For lunch, we're gonna be preparing a version of a gyro or gyro. I feel like I'm going to butcher the word gyro, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the word gyro because that is the term that I grew up using to refer to this type of dish, gyro. It is a delicious wrap of some kind of spiced meat, typically served with a yogurt sauce and other accoutrements inside of a pita, and you eat it similar to a wrap or a sandwich. Instead of the spiced meat, Today, we're gonna to be making a version with cauliflower. We're actually going to marinate it and then roast it whole. For the marinade for our cauliflower, we're gonna start with some yogurt. I'm adding paprika, dried oregano, garlic powder, and cumin. There's about a quarter teaspoon of each spice in the mix. Then we're gonna finish the seasoning with a little bit of black pepper and salt. We don't need to add too much salt here. So before we marinate our cauliflower, we're just gonna trim it up a little bit. So go around like this. Take off leaves. We're gonna reserve the nicer pieces of stem and add them into the garnish for our gyro. So it's time to marinate the cauliflower. We are gonna be using our hands instead of a tool. I think it's just a much more effective way to do this because uh, we really wanna be thorough about it. So I'm just gonna pour this over top, the cauliflower, and then I'm just gonna kind of work it in here. We wanna make sure we're getting underneath. So now that the cauliflower is marinated, if we put this in the oven right now, a lot of that yogurt would probably come right off very quickly. Put it in the fridge. It might take 30 minutes to an hour to really set up on the cauliflower, and then we'll be ready to roast it. Okay, so our cauliflower has been marinating in the fridge for about 30 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pop it in the oven at about 375 degrees. It's probably gonna take more like an hour or slightly over an hour, all depending on your oven. While we wait for it to finish, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the ingredients that will be inside the gyro. We're gonna build this kind of if it was like a salad. We have a nice little small cucumber here. I'm just gonna cut these into rounds. I'm cutting them relatively thick. We have a Roma tomato here, or a plum tomato. And then I'm gonna also keep these into rounds. If you don't have some of these things, but you have other vegetables, go ahead and put them in there. Get loose, make it with a red pepper. You can be versatile. We're gonna use about half a red onion. One cut across. And then I'm gonna slice it thin this way. You can always soak sliced red onion in cold water. It will take away some of this uh, harshness from the red onion. We're gonna work on our stems a little bit here. So if there's any parts that don't look nice or that are bruised, we're just gonna cut them off. And because they're very thick, we're gonna slice them thin. It really tastes like cabbage. So if you like green cabbage, you probably will enjoy eating the stem of cauliflower. So last thing, we're gonna add a little bit of fresh parsley. So you'll notice I'm cutting right through leaf and stem. Stems are delicious, have a lot of flavor. All right, so we've cut all our ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and dress it with a bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. Just gonna give it a little quick toss. Time to make the yogurt sauce, and this is a very simple recipe. We have some plain yogurt, some mayonnaise, lemon juice, and for our garlic, I have a microplane here, a little grating tool. We're just gonna go ahead and hold it on the root end, grate it right over this. A lot of folks don't like raw garlic or they like a very minimal amount of raw garlic. So if you're one of those people, just take it easy during this step. A little salt and pepper. This can go in the fridge. You can make this ahead of time, have it ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cauliflower now. Ours has been in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, this thing is looking right. Most importantly, you're just looking for it to be caramelized on the outside, golden brown, got some spots that are a little darker than golden brown. You can see where the yogurt really like baked on the cauliflower. And when you stick, say, a paring knife into it, it feels tender and it smells amazing. If you weren't a fan of cauliflower before, once you roast it like this, you will be. So I let this cool down a little bit after it came out of the oven so I can handle it. We're gonna slice this. We're gonna put together one gyro. The inside is nice and tender, but it's definitely gonna take a little bit of salt. We have our sliced roasted cauliflower, we have our yogurt sauce, our salad. We're gonna build this thing. So, piece of pita. I'm gonna start with the cauliflower. I'm gonna put a little bit at the back, keeping in mind that we're gonna really close it here. So, most of the space is gonna be towards the front. 
mean, we're gonna like load this thing up. In the end, we want it to be nice and full. So we're gonna go right on here with a bit of the yogurt sauce. Put as little or as much as you want on this. Give our salad one more little, little mix aroni. Loading it up. As long as you can get your hands around it and crush it in your mouth, that's all that matters. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this in my mouth, but we're gonna, we're gonna definitely try. So here we have it, a whole roasted cauliflower gyro, four portions for $9.80, coming out to $2.45 a portion. Mm. Awesome, so this thing's great. The suspense was killing you, if it would be good or not, it's good. The whole roasted cauliflower makes this thing really meaty, and the outside char brings this great depth of flavor to the gyro. You got these fresh vegetables, awesome texture, and the yogurt sauce brings it all together. It's dinner time. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a substantial salad for dinner, and in the case of this Caesar salad, we'll be adding a nice slab of roasted cauliflower alongside the salads, and the remaining part of the cauliflower we're going to use to make the dressing by pureeing them. This salad's perfect if you want a dinner on the lighter side, but also want something that's very satiating. So I'm gonna cut two nice, thick slabs of cauliflower. So we have our slabs. I'm gonna put the cauliflower that we're gonna be using to make our dressing to the side. I'm gonna turn my pan on here, kind of medium heat. I do like searing it on the stove top because it will allow us to get a really nice caramelization on the face of the slabs, just like if you were cooking a steak. So I have a little bit of olive oil here. I'm just gonna put enough to kind of coat the bottom of the pan, a few tablespoons. So we're gonna wait till we see just the first sign of smoke, and then we're gonna go in. We want this to be hot. So our pan's hot now. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of slide it in gently. All right, so you hear a nice sizzle going. If you put this in and you hear no sizzle, that's not a good sign. That means that it's really not as hot as you want it. I'd almost say at that point, just take it out. Let it get a little hotter. So once I start to hear this like healthy sizzle, it sounds a little too hot, maybe it starts smoking, I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium and then we're gonna cook it slow. We don't wanna put the lid on, we don't want any steam in this pan until we've actually gotten color on both sides. The first side of the cauliflower is nice and caramelized, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip these now, using my tool to be careful to put it away for me so I'm not splashing any hot oil on myself. Some of the pieces are kind of falling off. It's not a big deal if it happens. The other side of the cauliflower has also become caramelized now, so I'm gonna go add a touch of water, add the lid, and I'm gonna just let this kind of steam. It's probably gonna take another 20 minutes or so. You don't want this like boiling inside. It should just be like a little steam kind of cooking this cauliflower through. I've put the lid slightly ajar as to release some of the steam while the cauliflower cooks we're going to make our Caesar dressing. It's not technically a Caesar dressing, it's more of a cauliflower puree that's flavored like a Caesar dressing. But strangely enough, it actually tastes very similar, even in texture, to a traditional Caesar dressing. So we have our cauliflower pieces that were left over after we made our slabs. I'm gonna take the stem off here. I'm not gonna use it for this. We just wanna break this down into smaller pieces. So we have our chopped cauliflower. This pot right now is cold. I'm gonna add everything together and then bring it all up together. We have a couple cloves of garlic here. Just gonna peel them quickly. We're gonna cut the garlic into just basically thirds lengthwise, so these larger chunks. Add those in there. I have three anchovies. I feel like people just say they don't like anchovies. You're not gonna ever know there's an anchovy in there. It's just gonna give it some nice savoriness. If you didn't know, now you know there are anchovies in traditional Caesar dressing. That's why we're adding them here. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil here. So I'm gonna turn this on. We've got it on low, medium heat. We wanna hear just like a little sizzle. And we're just gonna let this thing go. It's gonna take like 10 to 15 minutes or so. Our cauliflower is looking delicious, so it has shrunk quite a bit in volume. The pieces have even broken down further. We have a nice kind of golden brown hue to all the pieces. The garlic has also caramelized and the anchovies are nowhere to be seen. Turn the heat off here. I'm gonna bring in the blender. We're gonna get ready to make the dressing. Our cauliflower has cooled down to about room temperature. It might still slightly be a little warm. That's fine. We just don't want it to be screaming hot. In the meanwhile, I also turned off the cauliflower and that it is fork tender right now. So I'm gonna go right into here. We're gonna add our lemon juice. I'm gonna put three quarters of it in. I might add the rest in. I might not, depending on how it tastes. I have Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add a touch of the water just to kind of loosen things up. I will keep more water around. I might use it to change the texture of the dressing. 
and then I have a bit of olive oil. You can see it turning, but it's not like pulling into the blade, which means it's not gonna blend smooth. So I'm gonna turn it off and add a little more water. Whatever your blending starts to stick to the sides, I'm just gonna push it down in there and give it another shot. We basically wanna blend this until it's nice and smooth. So it's tasty, but definitely needs salt. We're gonna add a good amount of black pepper in here too. Mm. That's good. There's more depth to this because of the roasted cauliflower. It still has a pretty light texture to it. No Caesar salad is complete, the little crouton action. So we have a couple pieces of white bread here. I'm gonna keep them relatively big. I like a crouton that's kind of on the larger side. I'm gonna turn the heat on high here. And I'm gonna cook them in a decent amount of olive oil. If we were to add the bread into this pan now with the oil being cold, the bread would just kind of like sit in the oil and absorb it all before it actually toasted. So let's give it a second. All right, oil's hot, I'm gonna get in here. You can hear it toasting straight away, that's what we wanna hear. I'm gonna keep the temperature hot. I'm just gonna kind of turn them around so they kind of get coated in oil. You'll see already, we're getting crispiness. Stay around the pan for this one. This is something you stay here, you do it. I will say if you were to make croutons like this, you wanna use them quickly. Because if you make a crouton like this, it's not as shelf stable. So I'm using my hand at times to flip these. Don't do that, unless you feel very confident in doing that. But you don't wanna burn yourself. Sometimes I gotta flex on these people here so they know I actually know how to cook. When you have something that's hot and it has some kind of fat on the outside, when you season it, when it's hot, the salt will stick a little better. Toss it around, it should be good. All right, croutons are ready to go. Time to build the salad. I'm going to start by cutting up our romaine lettuce. You can cut these however you want. I think I'm gonna cut these in half basically first. Lengthwise and then across. Some of these inner hearts, they're beautiful. So I'm actually gonna just take them out. So this is actually all kept together by the root. So I'm just gonna take the root off and then keep these inner pieces as they are. Do the same thing with the rest. Okay, lettuce is cut. So unlike a traditional Caesar salad, we're actually gonna dress the lettuce with just olive oil and lemon juice, salt and pepper. I'm gonna put the croutons in here as well. It's nice for the croutons to get a little softened by the oil. That already looks like a Caesar salad right here. Little mix. We're gonna go ahead and cut one of the slabs of cauliflower. One thing to consider here is that we have not seasoned this at any point. So I'm gonna make sure to season each slab while it's still warm. Cut it in half. This is good stuff here. Time to plate this up. I'm gonna start with the dressing. When you have a traditional Caesar dressing, it's a lot of oil. So you wouldn't wanna just eat it with a spoon. This is really just a puree. So although it tastes like a Caesar dressing, it's also nice to just eat on its own. Put our cauliflower on. Bring the lettuce over in the same direction. Just gonna kind of mix in some croutons. And we're gonna finish this off with a bit of cheese. And then Caesar salad is one of those things that it wants a lot of black pepper. So we're gonna give it to it. And there you have it, cauliflower Caesar salad. $10.04 for four portions, coming out to $2.51 a serving. I'm so happy the way this turned out. Definitely a fork and knife type of salad. So I'm gonna get some of the dressing, get some of my lettuce. Mm. The combination of cauliflower and Caesar dressing is awesome. I would eat this any day over a Caesar salad with chicken. I love chicken, nothing against chicken. We're definitely saving some money here by really utilizing the whole cauliflower. Today we transformed cauliflower into three delicious and unique dishes. I hope the recipe showed you how versatile cauliflower really is and how easy it is to highlight it in so many different ways. 